Hello students, welcome to the second lecture on the Laplace transformation. In this lecture, we will see how you can solve the various examples on it. So as we have discussed in the last class that uh, if a function f of t is a piecewise continuous and the exponential order, then the Laplace transformation always exists by using equation number 1. Also we have seen that whenever uh, this Laplace transformation exists, it is a function of the s only. Remember that it is a function of the s only. So we will denote this as f of s. And whenever you want to calculate this, we will check our answer that when you substitute s as infinity, f of s will always goes to the 0. So how we can solve these uh, examples related to them? We will see firstly these 6, 7 problems are there. So remember these are the standards Laplace transformation. Once we will compute, you should remember all those results. So let's start with the first one f of this. So what, what is the definition of the Laplace of the transformation is? That is from 0 to infinity e raised to power minus st f of t of dt. We can substitute the f of t here. How you can integrate them? k will be the constant outside and then you can integrate this value here. You can substitute s as uh, infinity 0. So this will be my 0 provided s will be a greater than 0. And whenever t is 0, it will be my 1 is there. So provided this condition holds. So you should remember that if somebody asks you what is the Laplace transformation of the 7, so it means 7 by s. Second example is when you have to find the Laplace transformation of the exponential part. Again, we will start from here. It You can see the bases are same. You can add them here. You can integrate them here. When you substitute s a here, it will be 0 provided s minus a should be positive. Then only it will be 0. So that's why this condition will be here. See, it means when, whenever they, someone asks you find the Laplace transformation of this, you can write directly as s minus 3 because a is my 3. You can find the Laplace transformation of the polynomials. So all of you know that this is nothing but my gamma function of this. What is the, what is the general rule behind this integration is e raised to power minus ax. The, this answer is gamma function of the n whatever here a raised to power n. a means coefficient of the s. So what is the coefficient of the t is my s raised power here. Next one you can integrate this with respect to this. Uh, all of you know that how you can integrate this value. So this is by parts you can integrate and the result here. When you substitute infinity it will be my 0 provided s will be my g greater than 0. This is my infinity. So you can use the allo speed rule and then you can solve them. You will get this result. Similarly, for the Laplace transformation of the sine of t, you can integrate them by parts, you will get this result. Now the last part is the cos hyperbolic, so uh, after the substitution you will get here. So remember the only difference is, one is the s, second is the a. Also you may remember that cos square plus sine square is 1, so you can think about like here. You can express the cos hyperbolic in terms of the exponential part like this way, while the sine hyperbolic is a negative sign. How you can find the Laplace transformation of this part is, so I can take Laplace transformation of here plus that is a linear property. By using the linear transformation of this Laplace, we will get here. What is the Laplace transformation of exponential part? That is s minus a. What is the Laplace of the s minus minus plus of a? You can solve this. You can take the LCM. You will get here. So remember, uh, we have derived in the previous slide, what is the Laplace transformation of the cos? It is s upon s squared plus a squared, but here is a negative. Similarly, you can take the Laplace transformation on the both sides, you will get this expression. So remember, all these results, whatever we have drawn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the 1 is 7, they are the standard results, like here. So if you want to find the Laplace transformation of word, remember these all are the standard. You can think about that since it is a sine square, but it does not match with the sine. The, there are the two methods. The first method is you can integrate this over here, but you can see it will take a lot of time. You can uh, use by parts and so on. The best way is you can represent this in terms of here. You can see all these power are one. You can convert this like here. I can write this by using the formula of the cos of 2a is 1 minus 2 sine square a. Now, now you can take the Laplace transformation on the both side and using the linear property. This is by using the linear property of Laplace transformation. So what is that? This is the constant value. So Laplace of the constant is k by s. So it will be 
half by s. What is the Laplace of the cos of the a is? That is a s upon s square plus a square. Now you can simplify it. You will get this result as the answer. Look at this one here. This is the exponential. This is the polynomial. This is a polynomial with and here. So again, you can start from here. That is by using the linear property. What is the Laplace of exponential part? You always remember this one upon s here. What is that? This is gamma function of n plus one. That is a gamma function of three by two upon s raised to power. Remember that always. If it is n plus two, it is n plus. If it is n plus one, it is n plus one. And Laplace of this is it. Now, how you can solve this gamma function by using this property? Gamma function of the n is n minus one. Gamma function of n minus one. So you can see gamma function of three by two. I can write as half and half. And if you write as a five by two, how you write them is a three by two. Then again, gamma function of three by two, you can write as a one by two. Again, as a one by two. Similarly, you can write as a seven by two as of the five by two until you will get as a one by two here. And one gamma function of half is root pi. So you can substitute this value as of the root pi. You will get here. So I can also you can simplify this. Otherwise, this is the required answer. How you can solve this one? You can see that this is not be expressed in either of the form are there till now. But we will see whenever we will try to learn uh, our lecture shifting second theorem, we can express this function also in form of this standard formula. But right now it is not be there, so we can use this definition here. We can integrate this over zero to two and then two to infinity. So we can substitute this value as a zero and so on. So this value is zero. What is the integration of this? Is there e raised to power here upon minus s? This one. In each of the example, you can easily check that whenever s approaches infinity, your answer, whatever the answer, will goes to the zero. You can check that this is also zero. You can also check that whenever s approaches infinity, this goes to the zero. This is zero. This is zero. The answer is zero. So that's the way you can check your answers. Look at the last example. Now here it is a polynomial, but The whole power is not be there, so you can expand them. Again, by using the linear property, you can write like this way. What is that here? This is again four. This is the gamma function of the two upon s square. So, what is the gamma function of the two? Is this one? What is the gamma function of one? Is one upon s square. Also, gamma function of this is n minus one factorial if n is my positive integer. So here it is a two gamma function of two is one factorial. What is the constant value is one by s and so on. How you can expand this value? Again, gamma function of three by two you can write like here. You can substitute this value. You will get this as the required answer. Again, you can check that whenever you substitute s infinity, whatever the answer, it will goes to the zero. You can easily verify that. So this is the way you can use this standard formula. Always remember these six or seven standard formulas. We will see in the next class what is the shifting first theorem of the Laplace transformation. till then you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos best of luck students happy learning